Okay, good morning and afternoon to everyone. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Phonological Processes and Beyond. I um, hope you all learned something that you can directly apply to your therapy. I am one of the authors of the KLPA3. I'd like to disclose that. And then I'd also like to say that uh, this webinar builds on an earlier webinar done by Nancy Lewis last August introducing the KLPA3. And if, since I'm also using information on the GFTA3, there was an earlier webinar by Shannon Wong which goes into details about that assessment instrument. Okay, so our agenda for today is this. We're going to look at Oliver, who's age five years, six months, and we're going to examine him from his assessment through treatment planning for him. We have basically four steps. One is to look at the GFTA3 results, and then we'll go to the KLPA3 analysis and go through that step by step. And then we'll talk about how actually we'll actually develop treatment goals using the KLPA3. And then the last part is ongoing digital. Okay, so the GFTA results. Uh, I'd like to say first, before you administer the articulation part, please plan ahead. Will you be completing the KLPA3? Do you think this child will need a phonological analysis? Generally speaking, these are the three criteria for making that decision. If the child is very young, or the child has multiple misarticulations, which you may be able to tell by chatting with the child in advance, or if the child has poor intelligibility, then you may want to plan on doing it, both the articulation and the phonology for this child, for a child. If you do that, you need to capture the full transcriptions from the GFTA3 record form. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. But you have the option of scoring each phoneme that is incorrect as, as just that incorrect or you can score it in as incorrect and note the, um, the error, which is what you'll actually need if you're going to do the KLPA3. All right, so Oliver was referred by his kindergarten teacher because he sounds young for his age and because he was difficult to understand. So using our three criteria, so, all right, so basically what I'm saying is that Oliver is not a very young child but he does have poor intelligibility, according to his teacher, difficult to understand. And either by listening to him or by asking questions, um, we are pretty sure that he has multiple misarticulations. So he meets two out of the three criteria for doing a KLPA3. On this slide, you can see the first um, page of the actual uh, recording of utterances from the children. And you, this differs from the, K, from the, sorry, from the GFTA, too, uh, because all of the consonants are scored. So we, we have initial in purple, medial in green, and final in blue. And all of them are scored, not just some of them. In addition, the vowels are transcribed, so you can refer to them. I think that's a nice addition. Um, they are not color-coded because they're not consonants. So here's a page from Oliver's. This is uh, scored in the way that the manual recommends so that you mark through any phoneme that is incorrect. And then you transcribe off to the right, if you choose, this is an option, uh, the error that was made. So lion, the L was incorrect. And we can see here that ya was used for la. So we know that Oliver said yayan. For glasses, there are four errors. So there are lines marked through the G, the L, the S, and the Z. And the transcription for what happened is here off to the right. W for the cluster G, L. TH for S and TH for Z, both voiceless. And so I've just listed the errors here, but they're the same as what we just looked at. So this is one method of 
uh, recording errors on the Goldman Christo when you know you're going to test a child with a phonological problem. I've adapted that in this way. I still use the diagonal mark if a sound is wrong, uh, if it is deleted, um, but if I know, if, if I hear what the child has used instead, then I transcribe the phoneme the child actually used right over the target phoneme. So I've transcribed the y right over the la. And for glasses, I lined through the G because the, the cluster was simplified. And I've noted w over the L and voiceless TH over the S and Z. And in this way, this can be transferred to the KLPA3 record form more easily. I know that this is yayan. I know that this is wathith more easily than if I have to go back and forth from the mark for the error to the transcription. So this is, uh, I am recommending 